Hi peeps, hope you're okay. Welcome back yet again. This is uh, the Trouble Kids live stream. We're streaming on the Trouble Kids group in Facebook. Thanks for coming. Bit of a thing today and should really wish everybody a happy anniversary. Well, not anniversary, but um, this is our 10th live stream. Um, when I started this, I just thought oh, I'll give it a go, you know, see... Um, See if anybody, see if anybody comes, and see if it's going to be uh, useful to anybody. Um, and here we are, ten episodes later. So, um, Fab, thank you for being here. So, um, if you are here, if you're on, um, just say hello in the comments so that I know who's here. Uh, that'll be Fab. I can welcome you by name as well. Um, just to say, if you're new to this, uh, you can subscribe on YouTube. So um, please do that. Um, and you obviously watch the playback after on there. My name is Johnny Matthew. I'm a, a social worker and a criminologist um, by training. And this is just my way of sort of gathering like-minded people together who work with troubled kids and who might be able to benefit from each other's wisdom and experience and resources uh, and so on. So um, if you're one of those, whiz over onto Facebook, search up the Troubled Kids group um, and click in and join us because uh, it'd be good to have you here. Just a word to the wise, by the way, if you're asking folk or inviting people to the group, which is great, I mean, we're... 1,350-odd, 60-odd people in now. But um, if you're inviting them, please ask them to answer all three questions um, before they request to join. There's a set of, a couple of questions there. Just, you know, what's your interest in troubled kids? What is your role? And then do you agree to the kind of principles of, of the group? Um, so we want people to click through. I don't click people through if they don't answer those, essentially. But I do spend quite a lot of time messaging people saying, you haven't answered the questions, love to have you, but you need to do that. So um, there we go. So um, well, we're going to get into it. So this is basically how it runs. We usually look at some posts of the week. And um, then we, so looking at the Trouble Kids group and things that have been posted there. Then we, uh, we'll take some questions, maybe. And then I recommend a website or a couple of websites, a sort of resources thing, really, I guess, sharing resources. And then we do a book uh, giveaway. So uh, more details about that in a moment. In the meantime, thank you. Fab. There we are. Sorry, I think I hit the button a bit earlier there. So uh, just to say, last week um, we were giving away a copy of uh, Harry the Hound, book two. There's a link in the description uh, for that. Um, and uh, Leanne uh, won that and Steve Corrigan as well. So Leanne Palmer, your book is packed and ready to go. I just need somebody to take it to the post office for me, so I'm working on that. Um and Steve, if you're watching, and I don't know your uh, postal address, mate. So I don't know if you put your name in the comments and then you had to go and you missed that bit. But you've, you've won a book. So uh, I'm quite keen to send that to you. So just uh, just let me have your postal address. Mail at johnnymatthew.com and I'll get that to you. Um, at the end of the session today, I'm giving away one of these. Boom. Look at that. The body keeps the score by Bessel van der Kolk. It is fantastic. I mean, it's uber brill, is this. So um, I'm giving that away. That's a brand spanking sparkly copy that I bought specially for it. I, um, I've i got my own copy uh, up here, which is very, very well thumbed. I also have it on, uh, on audiobook, uh, on Audible, because it's just one of those I, I constantly recycle. Uh, there's a few of them. Maybe I'll do. Maybe I'll do a, a bit of a blog post, or a, we'll cover that at some point. Maybe top ten websites and books and, and things like that. Maybe I don't know. Anyway, so there we go. So there is a book giveaway at the end. We'll do it in the normal way. Put me in the comments. I will play the fanfare, and then we'll get into it and do that. I'll be able to post that one a bit more quickly because it's the right size, and I can post it later today. Whereas the Harry the Hound are a bit big, so I've had to uh, do make special arrangements. 
for those. Fantastic. Um, okay, let's see who's in. Let's have a look. Tarina's in. Hi, Tarina. Hi, Mary. Jackie, hi, Matt. Just getting my head down after another night shift. Catch it later. Well, bless you, matey. I hope it was a good night. Uh, I, I need to give you a shout at some point, Martin. So uh, if you think on, drop me a message and we'll uh, we'll hook up. I'd like to have a conversation. Cheryl, hi, Cher. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Lynn. Leanne, hi, thank you for your patience on the book, Leanne. Um, Lynn's book arrived. Oh, have you got the book? Have you? Is that the uh, Best of Landed Court book? Maybe you've got that. Hi, Lise from NPT. Good to have you here. Fab. Okay. Um, I'm going to press on and look at some posts from this week. Thank you for those of you uh, who are posting. There's been some really good stuff uh, on there. I think it was Kerry who posted about the um, the kids doing pictures with uh, with and th with crayons and then taking a hairdryer to them and all the crayons melted. It was beautiful. That was fab. A great idea. Um, but thank you. It's it's so much richer. The more of you post. Uh, the better it is. And at the moment, it seems to be... Martin, obviously, is principal poster par excellence. Uh, he's some great stuff. He is a superb curator of relevant information. Uh, and obviously, my stuff goes on there quite a lot as well. So uh, just to encourage the rest of you, if you come across something, you read something useful, um, there's a massive range of folk in this group. And... Um, so please just take a second, clip the link and post it. Uh, we've got social work folk, we've got family support people, foster carers, teachers, youth workers, uh, fosterers, uh, ad adoptive uh, parents. I know we've got one or two young people and adults who've come through the uh, care system as well. Um, so there are a whole wide range of people involved in... Um, in the group, youth offending team people, residential staff and so on as well. So if you think you're in a bit of a niche and people might not be interested, post it anyway, because the chances are somebody will be interested. And I'm finding it really quite a rich place to go for information. And I'm loving the quotes and the photos and stuff as well. So please get on um, and, uh, and go for that. Uh, that'd be great. Lynn is saying, I'm listening to it on audio at the moment. Yeah, well worth it. It is. Uh, that's Bessel van der Kolt's book, I think. Uh, Body Keeps the Score. It's great. Get it on Audible. I have an Audible subscription. It costs me something like six ninety nine a month or something. And you get a book for that. When you're going to pay, I think I paid about nine quid or ten quid or something for this to give away this week. Well, you can get it on Audible if you if you if you haven't been on there before. You've got an Amazon account. Most people get Amazon account anyway. You can get into Audible as part of that, um, and uh, it'll cost you. You probably get a free trial. Well, you get a free book anyway, so it won't cost you anything. And then, even though I, that's quite a cheap book for considering how brilliant it is, it's about eight quid, nine quid or something. Well, if you're paying six ninety nine, seven ninety nine a month, you're getting it. You're getting it cheaper. Anyway, so I really recommend Audible. I do it. I went out for a walk yesterday. It was chucking it down. So Karen and Annie didn't fancy a walk. So I went off for a walk. Did half an hour just listening to that. Um, sometimes I do that. Sometimes I listen to non-work stuff uh, or podcasts and things. But I really, really recommend Audible. And particularly that book. It's very well narrated. And there's tons of... There's a lovely mix between anecdote and stories about people. And proper bulletproof grounded research from one of the biggest hitters on the planet on trauma. So I, I, I can't recommend that strongly enough. I'll put a link in the description again for that. Okay, so I want to look at a couple of links. Who else is in? Hi, Harry. Uh, cool. Um, so first of all, let's, let me get you guys on screen here. Um, so hopefully you can see that. This is Martin Seligman, Professor Martin Seligman. Um, now, Yasmin posted this. Uh, Yasmin French, thanks for the post, Yasmin. Fantastic. I really enjoyed this. Uh, or what of it I've listened to? I've listened to about a quarter of it, maybe. It's really good. I mean, Martin Seligman is one of those people you read at the top of like, academic papers, you know, you've kind of heard of, but I've never actually seen him before. So it's lovely to actually have him in conversation with 
uh, Richard Layard again, who's who's um, yeah, an, I think an economist and so, but a, a very clever guy. And listening to those two, who are contemporaries, really um, talking was just I, I it was really good. I'm going to listen to it hopefully later today or on Friday to make sure I finish that. But thank you for posting that, uh, Yasmin. They're talking really about so Martin Seligman is the well, he's kind of thought of and probably is the, the inventor or the father of positive psychology and um, sort of research into all kinds of things and about how uh, attitude and mood affect outcomes and performance and subjective experience and all that kind of stuff. Um, very, very good. And he's talking in this, the bit I've heard anyway, about uh, the pandemic and where that leaves us and what role optimism and cheerfulness uh, playing that. Those are two very different things. Optimism being a cognitive uh, state, cheerfulness being an affective state, what he calls affective positives, as opposed to cognitively positive people. Um, so uh, really good, fascinating, very interesting and well worth uh, a look. So crack on with that and have a listen to that or a, or a watch uh, if if you can, um, the other thing I wanted to mention was um, another book. This one, know me to teach me. I t I kind of trailed this last week because uh, I think it was Martin or somebody posted that this had come out. Uh, it's uh, it's out this year, so it obviously hasn't been out very long. It's Louise Bombay's uh, new book know me to teach me it's in it's in the same vein as all of her stuff but she in my view keeps getting better um and i as i say i've only read about the first 40 or 50 pages but already i i've abused this <laughs> this book terribly i've scribbled all over it i've got sticky bits of paper in it and there's some fantastic quote fodder um in there and she's really addressing this idea that teaching generally and education across the board needs a complete revamp. Um, and that whilst that may not be visible uh, possible quickly, that as each individual educationalists, those responsible for particular classrooms, and even those assigned to specific children, can make real concrete changes which cumulatively um, across the education sector can really start to shift things along. What I really like about Louise is it's well expressed. It's there's an economy of words. She's not she doesn't use flash language or unnecessarily clinical kind of language or medical vernacular and jargon is not really there. But she she clearly understands all that but but really expresses it very clearly and the other thing i really like about her, she's quite campaigning so she makes um she makes comments about you know things need to change i don't know if i'll be able to find one here but um uh ch -ch 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 oh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I should have got one in advance shouldn't i but she she has a pop in a very nice way at um like she says here we need an update. We, what we need is an updated framework that integrates neuroscience, pedagogy, and psychology into the classrooms. Practices of attunement, regulation, attachment must be in place and active before learning and cognition can occur. We must get relationships on the map in school and then prioritise relationships first before anything else. Yes, even the curriculum. Exclamation mark. So she's saying, yeah, you're a teacher, of course. You're an educationist, of course. You need to know your subject, of course. But none of that matters if you can't build a relationship with kids, and particularly those kids who are struggling because of adversity and, and so on, that relationship is the work. Uh, it's the foundation layer. Um, it's back to that trauma recovery model stuff again, that you have to have that there first in order for those higher processes which are more engaged in the classic learning models to be of any use to kids at all. So uh, I'd love to say a lot more about that. But the reason I got onto that was that in the posts this week, um, Martin, per, Martin posted this, this uh, I think, 
again, which is just a, the most powerful tool we have for influencing behavior is relationship we build with kids or the relationship we build with kids, both. Um, and I wanted to stress that because I've been reading Louise's book and very much struck by it. And then I noticed to my delight um, that Matt had also posted this podcast, which is Adoption and Fostering Podcast. Um, and it's an interview uh, about a month ago with Louise Bombay. So if you want to get a flavour of her, maybe before you buy the book, um, that's well worth a listen. Louise was a teacher. Uh, then she took on a role as um, a kind of specialist teacher for EBD kids uh, and then trained as a therapist, then ran an EBD unit and got involved in some policy stuff. And now she's kind of all over the place, ubiquitous. Uh, and I think touch base is her organisation, so you might want to look that out as well. Cannot recommend her stuff highly enough, but that post, I thought, was fab. So, um, I don't know if, if you guys have got any questions at all, please put them in the comments now, because I'm nearly done here, and I'm going to come to those in a sec. But that, that podcast is absolutely well worth uh, listening to, so maybe give that a bit of time as well. And obviously, if you're a podcaster... You can um, you can look at that in iTunes or Spotify. I use Downcast. Uh, you might use Google, whatever. Whatever you you get and keep your podcasts. Look up the Adoption Fostering Podcast episode 95 because that interview is well worth a listen. You just get a flavour of, of who she is. And um, uh, I like her. I, I like it a lot. It's fantastic stuff. Um, she's very good at curating theory and putting it together in a cohesive kind of um, way that makes it interrelate so there's Stephen Porges polyvagal theory stuff there's Dan Hughes stuff and DPP um, and she talks about all the attach uh, sort of attachment based stuff very hot on the trauma stuff she draws in Bruce Perry's stuff um, you know uh, and that kind of four hours thing that, that he talks about there so again can't recommend that highly enough okay I'm gonna flick over to the comments and see what we got here <laughs> yes funny Bombay bomber looks like the t-shirt this is another one borrowed from my daughter she has no idea I've got it but uh, I think my son who's now 20 had it he passed it on to her now i've stolen it borrowed borrowed temporarily from her she's through there so um there we go uh so if you um if you've got any questions pop those in the comments uh now and what i'll do to leave you a bit of time to do that i'm gonna whiz straight across onto the website recommendations so those of you who are uh, new to this, we, <clears throat> we sh I, I just kind of share a website or a couple of websites that um, that I think is is useful or have been useful to me. Um, I find a lot of my reading these days is is online reading, um, and particularly if, like me, you're presenting a lot, or you're teaching, or you're involved in training and so on, then. Um, there's such good material around. There's some fantastic graphics uh, around, and, and and so you know, I think it's. I just wanted to share some websites because I'd find I'd I'd often email people or something or text them and say check this out, and they'd go, wow, I didn't even know about that. And so I thought maybe that's something we could include here. So that's what we do generally. So I'm gonna spin over uh, onto the Mac screen again and show you a website here which we've had postings from on the site so this is that's north american site so you've got to get past the uh that stuff excuse the 40 mug clearly not mine being 55 but i accidentally put coffee in karen's tea mug so um <laughs> there we go uh, so this is the national child traumatic stress network um, which for anybody dealing with the care system or disaffected kids in education, the justice system, residential care docs in fostering, youth work and so on, will find some 
value in this, I think, because um, it covers all the areas that we're, that we're familiar with, maltreatment, adversity, ACEs, abuse, neglect, uh, and all that stuff. It comes from a North American angle, so it's well worth bearing in mind that it's, as most of the stuff out of the States is, not all of it, most of it, it's quite medical. I find it a bit labelling in the language they use, but of course the culture is slightly different. Uh, there too so you have to kind of allow for that but but there's some good stuff on here so um, this bit here on the left what is child trauma you can click through to that and it talks about uh, types of trauma populations at risk and about child trauma specifically and then if you click through you basically get some information uh, there that summarizes that whole thing uh, risk and protective factors. So it's looking at um, the, uh, you know, the kind of impact variables, uh, I suppose, around that. Uh, sometimes there are links through. There isn't particularly on this page. Treatment and practices. Again, good information about trauma treatment. Some of the screening practices. Um, core curriculum on childhood trauma kind of what's needed for clinicians and professionals there. Trauma-informed care. Again, it's looking at different bit. This was quite interesting, I think, is secondary traumatic stress. Sort of the things on that. Um, development of secondary traumatic stress recognised as a common occupational hazard for professionals. So you can view that. And again, who's at risk? How can you uh, avoid or intervene? If it's already happened, strategies to build resilience in the organization and in the individual and on it goes. And then they've all got a printer friendly version at the bottom. I think possibly the best bit here, though, is the resources section. So it's split into training and public awareness. And there's a, a Spanish section. There are a lot of North American people Spanish speaking. Um, but if we look at all the resources, look at these. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Um so you can search by keyword. You can look at resource type. So uh, fact sheet, tip sheet, resource guide, webinar, podcast, e-learning course, etc., etc. And on it goes. There's a more. There's even a mobile app. Um, this one I thought was interesting. I haven't read it yet, but I am certainly tend to read it. It's looking at um, resilience in young people, the impact of developmental trauma, COVID nineteen, and beyond. Again, that's a freebie. Uh, you can either read it on screen or download it uh, there if we view it on the learning center, which is essentially there. Uh, oh, it's not unavailable to students for some reason. It's not letting me on there. But um, I think that is worth a look because um, it's, well, it cover, it's absolutely bang on the money for what we're currently dealing with at the moment. And, um, you know, interesting from that point of view. So if we go back and just have a quick through a couple of these other resources, um, there's some child oriented models around that. Um, terrorism, disaster and children. If you're working with, I know Harry and colleagues in Fabric Wales, in Neath and Swansea, uh, working a lot with uh, refugees, asylum seekers and so on. I'm sure foster carers and resis will have some of those as well. That might be of interest. I haven't read it again. So I don't know um, how race, ethnicity, culture and identity impact treatment of trauma. Again, really important stuff, not because of Black Lives Matter stuff, although clearly that's rightly putting a focus on this. So that maybe that's what's brought it to my mind. But I just I'm aware for me, because of my background and being part of the kind of mainstream British white culture, if you like, I need to constantly be on my game to stay up with that stuff. And I'm I, I'm. Not as diligent as that as I could. I did go for a job once in Australia working with um, Aboriginal kids in the outback, um, flying around doing harmful sexual behaviour assessments. And I'm so glad I did some reading into the history of that stuff and read a couple of books about it and a load of papers because it's so impacts, particularly on sexual stuff and culture and relationships. Um, and I think because people are living here, we too easily make the assumption that they kind of like us, but a little bit different. Whereas in actual fact, they can be in a completely different cultural headspace. And that in itself has a set of impacts related specifically to trauma that we may not be able to 
um, naturally think about and uh, so we need some help with that so there we go um, there's some useful stuff on there that's the National Child Traumatic Stress uh, Network um, lastly oh I really ummed and out about doing this today because it's such a good one I thought maybe I should give it some time on its own but I'm going to mention it anyway because Louise Bombay has got me thinking about Bruce Perry's stuff um, again. Um, so this is the Child Trauma Academy uh, website, which is Dr. Bruce Perry. He's a psychiatrist and very interested in neuroscience and how trauma impacts on brain development uh, in, in, in children. It's fantastic stuff. His neurodevelopmental model of therapeutics or nmt has got a lot to offer and i know louise recommends that we recommend it in the trauma recovery model stuff that we do um but what i really love about this is that perry makes a lot of his articles and his papers and resources free to download so you can just read them which is fantastic so obviously they're offering treatment and stuff to kids so you know that may or may not be relevant it's certainly not for us because I know the a uh, few people on here and watch it on uh, YouTube from North America, uh, but uh, unless you're in Houston, you're not going to be able to take a kid there to to see them. But if you click on library up here in this top right corner, um, you can see. I don't, I don't know how clearly you can see that. I can zoom in a little bit. You can see these. Uh, these are the headings here: interventions, abuse, neglect, brain development, neuroscience. Child development, early childhood, trauma, PTSD, violence, and public health. So, I mean, I'm interested in the brain development, neuroscience stuff particularly. So, here, these are articles. You just download these. Traumagetic, traumagenic neurodevelopmental model of psychosis. Um, maltreatment in the developing child. I mean, that's just bang on the money for, for our kind of stuff. These are video casts. So, they are, they're on YouTube, basically. Uh, video series. Seven slide series video on... Uh, the human brain, sensitization and tolerance, th threat response patterns. Some of his stuff, because he's very learned, can be quite technical. Uh, I find his writing is quite technical. But one of the seminal papers for me of his was called The Neurodevelopmental Impact of Violence on Childhood uh, or on Child Development. And um, I think it's a 2001-2002 paper. Uh, it was formative for me. I felt like my there was a tectonic shift in the way I understood the kids I was working with when I first read that, um, and and I had that downloaded free from here. So you know you can just in most of these you can uh, you can just click on them, uh, and and there it is. How early childhood experience shapes child and culture. So there we go. So I really recommend that Child Trauma Academy. And as I say, I don't know if you're interested in trauma and PTSD. You can click on that. Memories of Fear. This one is one that I post quite a lot in my stream. Helping traumatised children. A brief, brief overview for carers. Great for foster carers. Guys, if you haven't read that. Well, for anybody actually. Certainly parents, foster carers and resi people really anybody working in a secure or custodial environment should read that it's great children and loss is good as well some of these papers are quite old now but i, t I tell you it is superb um like this one here child trauma the neurobiology of adaption and use dependent development of the brain wow i mean that's a, i think that's a 1995 paper but it is superb it's another one that was quite formative for me anyway at the risk of sounding like a um a Perry evangelist, uh, <laughs> call it a day at that, but um, cannot recommend Child Trauma Academy enough. We quote it quite a bit in our training and send people there, not least because it's Bruce Perry, but also because he makes his stuff available uh, free, which is superb. So there we go. Just a quick reminder to folk. I'm going to come to the comments now and take questions or just give a book away if there are no questions. But if you're watching us on YouTube, we are live in the Trouble Kids group. If you just um, search up Trouble Kids group in Facebook, 
go into Facebook, search Trouble Kids Group, click through. There are three questions you need to answer. What's your interest in Trouble Kids? What's your role? Your role might be that you're a parent. Your role might be that you're a child who grew up in the care system or has suffered adversity. And now you're an adult, you're interested to learn more. Um, it, it may be that you're a professional working with kids, whatever. Just, you know, what's your interest? What's your role? And do you agree to the group rules? Just click those, answer them, and you're rocking and rolling. And we'll let you in. And you can join the other 1,300 and however many there are. It's a big group. Feel like a force. We're a force. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so that's that. Let me go through and I'll put the comments will be there in a minute. Um, Perry, Perry, Perry. Okay, good. Right, let's have a look. Great to make it here, La Claire. Great to make it here live for the first time. Welcome, Claire. Great to have you. Glad you could make it. Trying to be positive. Has lost my job last week. Oh, no. Bless you. Well... Claire, get on the Trouble Kids group. Um, let us know where you sit in terms of, you know, the jobs that you're looking for and your qualifications and that. And whereabouts in the country you are, put it up there and people may be able to offer you. we got people from all over. I mean, there's people from overseas as well, but we mainly uh, UK folk. So um, get on. Bless you, that's hard going, man. And there must be a lot of that around uh, as well, which means, you know things generally are, are going to be a little bit uh, down in the dumps. It's hard stuff. So thinking of you, Claire, hang in there. Uh, good people will get through. And uh, be encouraged that if you... Being committed and passionate about what you do, uh, people pick up on it. I find myself quite often saying to people who are a bit discouraged and a bit down, saying something like, yeah, but do you know what? You're very passionate. You're extremely committed. People know that you are. And when it comes to recruitment, people know the good ones are. I reckon most weeks I get a call, a message, uh, a text or something like that or an email from somebody who's either applying for a job and looking for a steer or quite often people who are looking to recruit who will want a bit of advice or will want to push in the right direction or asking me if I know of anybody. So put it on there. Uh, what you're looking for, Claire, and um, let's see if we can push you in the right direction. I'm sorry to hear that. That's uh, that's hard going. Um, Zog is saying, uh, spot on with the cultural aspect. Bless you. Thank you. I'm glad. Yeah, we've got so much to learn. I've got so much to learn around that for sure. There we go. Right. In the absence of questions, then, I am going to um, give a book away. So... Uh, if you would like that book, oh, Claire is, uh, is in Powys, working in children's services through care team, 25 years of teaching before that. There we go. I know there's other Powys people on here. So if you're in Powys and or near, but, I mean, everywhere in Wales is near Powys, isn't it? Because it's massive. So I suppose it depends on where. But uh, give Claire a ring and get in touch with her through the uh, messenger through the group that'd be great so um book giveaway i'm going to let you guys get on if you would like a copy of bessel van der kolk's book the body keeps the score if you haven't read this you are in for a massive treat it's like an unexpected christmas coming in july um it's a very small print and lots of pages but I tell you, there's all kinds of illustrations and tables and goodness knows what. It is superb. I think if there's one book I'd recommend for understanding trauma, particularly in the impact of adversity, I would absolutely recommend this. So um, write me in the comments now and uh, I will come to that in a moment if you would like it. And go from there so while you're putting me in the comments i will just say um in terms of what's happening next week uh we'll be on again so that's the 15th of july at noon um and so i'm looking forward looking forward to that um i am going to give away next week a couple of copies of this uh, where are we? There we go. This is Inspiration from Ace Interrupters in Great Britain. Um, 
I've got a chapter in there. Uh, I didn't write it. It was an interview. Uh, but um, it's good because it's not that. My chapter's not particularly good. But I mean, the, the book is good because what it does is it's pulled together about a dozen or 15 people who um, are influencing the impact of ACE. Is really trying to do something about it. Jane, who I know has been on here is also got a chapter jane's creative activist let me find her page give that a, give that a plug getting good people stuff out there right here we go so that's that's jane's page there we go creative activist look at that freelance theater director wales well done jane so um next week i've got two copies of that i'm going to give those away next week if anybody wants them uh, I'll put a link in the description this week where you can get that because you can download it as well if you want to read it on your screen you can or you can print it off for nothing I believe so um, that's that uh, there'll be probably website again so if any of you have got questions please email me um, you can get me mail johnnymatthew.com uh, or through any of the kind of you know through the group or Facebook or, or whatever F feel free um to do that let's give away this book uh, lynn is just saying not lynn um deborah is just saying she's got the book she's struggling with the small print it is spectacularly small i mean look at that it's very small but um what i do i mean and this is me being a bit of a sad geeky type i listen on audiobook make bookmarks then i come back to here and i and i scribble and bookmark in there because I find a physical I, I like physical books anyway the house is full of books um, but um, I also find it easy if I'm prepping something to be able to flick through find a chapter and look for where I've underlined stuff and that so anyway lovely right here we go I'm going to play our amazing fanfare <laughs> and then I'm going to pick somebody to have this book so far I think most people have got... Oh, no, there's a couple on. There's a couple on. Oh, my word, right. You're all spread out. That's going to be fun. Right. Okay. Uh, here we go. Fanfare for book choosing. Right. Here we go. Ready? Vicky Burbage. Vicky. Uh, I'm going to put a love heart on your comment. For no other reason <laughs> to remind me that you've won the book. Well done, Vicky. Thanks for thanks for playing Adele, Lynn, Helen, Tarina, Jackie, Cheryl, Rachel, Sheila, Haley, and others. Bless you. Um, one of these days, I'm going to make a link with the publisher and have a shed load of books and bit. I give them out. I feel I always feel I feel I love giving books away because I absolutely love books. But there's a bit of it that always makes me think oh, I wish I had more because I'm I'm equally aware of a whole lot of people who didn't get it than the <laughs> people who have. So there we go. Well done, Vicky. Email me at um, uh, mail at johnnymatthew.com and with your postal address, and uh, I will get that through to you. Brill. Well, I think this is a world record in terms of um, getting everything done quick. So, not that we're rushing particularly, but uh, it's nice to do the business and uh, get on. Just say also, um, in terms of the YouTube playback, I'm sorry that was very late this week. I had no end of trouble trying to uh, get it sorted. And I don't know what that was about. So I left it and left it and left it and left it. It seems to upload pretty quick and it takes a while before it appears in the page and I can crop the link. Um but it just didn't. And so yesterday I abandoned it and redid it and it all did it in about 10 minutes. So that was a bit of a learning curve. <laughs> so hopefully it won't be as long. Uh, and this one will be up later today or in the morning. So uh, if you're watching on YouTube and you want to join us live, get into the Trouble Kids group on Facebook. Um, or just watch the playback. So there we go. I think that's me. Just check my notes. Make sure I haven't missed anything. Yep, we'll be back here on the 15th of July for more of the same. Uh, and then we'll catch... We need to have a some kind of forum where we decide whether I'm going to keep doing this because um, schools are breaking up and people will be um, 
things will be changing for people are going to say people will be on holiday but I don't know if they will but kids won't be at school it might be more difficult to do this and work stuff tends to change in the summer but I'm, I'm enjoying it and happy to keep doing it uh, for, a, for a while certainly uh, for some of the summer I'll be I'll have a couple of weeks off but so let me know what you think uh, I'd be grateful particularly if you'd email me mail at johnnymatthew.com just to let me know if this is helping if you would like it to continue and if so what time and date uh, would be good and I'll do my best to uh, fit around people if indeed we decide to carry on anyway in the interim thank you for lending me um, a bit of your Wednesday I do appreciate it. It's fab. It's nice to be with you all and uh, and to give really good books away. I'm going to just, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I'm doing half an hour every morning and uh, really getting into that. I'd love to get Louise on for a natter. But um, anyway, maybe that'll happen one day. So cheers. Have a great week, guys. Please look after yourselves. Um, it's really important that you do that. There's a course that we did. I, I haven't removed the button for that yet, but... Um, it's so important that we're on our game. And now, as we're coming out of lockdown and things have changed, there'll be a whole other set of challenges that we will pick up, not just for ourselves and our families, but for kids that we work with so uh, and their families. So please take care. Have a rest. Get a nap. Take some time out. Have a DIY bath spa with candles and background music. Go out for a walk on your own, in the rain, whatever it takes. Get yourself a little bit of downtime because it's so important that you're on your game. Anyway, there we go. Bless you. Thanks again for joining me. It's fab to be with you all. Keep doing what you're doing. It's so amazing and really important. And I will see you next week. Bless you. Cheers. <laughs>